While good typography can take all sorts of shapes and forms, there's one thing all designers agree on. Line length matters. Now, Wikipedia's layout did not change much since 2004. And you might say, why change a winning horse? Yet, every time I open Wikipedia, my designer nerve starts glitching. And why is that, you may ask, and I'll be happy to answer. The f***ing line length. And some other little things. Let me explain while I set up a patch here. This is a block of text, simply dropped on the screen, pretty easy to read, right? Try to read it now. Harder, right? It's the same text, same font size, but no consideration of line length whatsoever. No margins, no padding, no nothing. Read this text for a minute or two and you'll notice that it's actually quite hard to focus. It's obvious to see the difference when I show it like this, but allow me to search this term, line length, in Wikipedia, because yeah, there is an article about it, and it says the following. If the lines are too short then the text becomes disjointed. If they are too long the content loses rhythm as the reader searches for the start of each line. Line length is determined by typographic parameters based on a formal grid and template with several goals in mind, balance and function for fit and readability with a sensitivity to aesthetic style and typography. Yeah, that was a mouthful. I came up with a new design for Wikipedia where I do consider line length and I explain the design decisions that I've made through the complete user interface. I'm gonna project it here and my patch is ready so I'm gonna jam on the side. You can feel free to tag along and just chill with the music and see it or go all the way to the end where I break down my design decisions and explain every each of the steps. See you in the next video. Oh, and you should subscribe. If you're into this nerdiness, you should definitely subscribe. This is coming every week. Ciao.
said food goods are important for our for our environment, you know. I mean, it's better for things to look good than to look bad. Of course, the problem there is uh, it depends on whose opinion you're, opinion you're seeking. But I think the value of a designer, for example, <coughs> to, a, to a businessman is that he can add a great deal of value to his product, to the businessman's product. And I, I don't think that businessmen really understand this. Um, he can make, uh, he can improve the quality by making it look better. And many, very often, the designers have ideas that, that not only improve the appearance of the product, but also improve the product itself. This, of course, is truer in industrial design than in the graphic design. But uh, a designer, is a good designer who understands his business, can make things memorable, make them easy to recall, which is very important and uh, improve the general quality of life, which is the only reason for our existence. Let's have a look at the design while the track is being wrapped up. I started with the header. If you look at the title for the article, typography, it is fairly small. It's bold, but it's small. The one that I came up with has more space around it. The font is thinner, but it's much larger. And this space allows it to breathe and allows us to focus. It helps draw the attention and in general it's just a little bit more pleasing to look at a layout that's breathing. It has more space in it. The second thing that's very noticeable here is that the first sentence of the article is quite significantly larger and thinner. This is basically this piece of text here. And I think it's just good practice in terms of UX to put it this way because a lot of times when we go to Wikipedia we just want to know in short what something is about and by highlighting it like this it makes it easier for us to just go through very quickly to understand and move on. Of course you can read through the whole article if you want but this is just a quick one-liner. The next thing that I think is going to improve the experience drastically is the fact that the contents is here on the side and it could actually be locked to the sides so when you scroll it will stay visible all the time. I didn't do it here because this is just a basic prototype but if I would develop this I would definitely keep this static on the screen because it will just allow me to jump through the article quickly. Two more things I'd like to highlight here before we finish this. One has to do with the margins. You can see every article has this margin on the side with this menu on the left side. I don't know who of you actually used this menu. I've never used this ever. But anyway, this is here. I'm not going to change that. What I did is give it more space. And this just serves as a frame for this. This is the content. This is what people came in to see. If I got to this article, I'm probably interested in the article itself and everything around is not that relevant. So to create this focus by creating a frame around it, I am creating a focus on the article. And then to make it even more significant, I am graying out everything on the left because there is really no need for these highlighted blue links. The links are important, yeah, I could use these as links, but 
I know their links. I don't need the indication of blue that comes from 1995 when we started developing websites or even earlier. And there was an indication of a link is blue. There's just no need in these indications anymore. We got used to it. And the last thing I wanted to note has to do with margins and paddings in general. So this piece of text here, this is 80 characters long, which is going to make a pretty smooth reading experience. The font is a little bit larger, but then this whole box doesn't really take that much space now, right? I actually have space on the right and I have space on the left. So the space on the left is used for the contents that can be sticky to the side, so I don't need to uh, scroll through when I'm down below in the article. And on the right, I can have images like just like we have now. But the nice thing of having a little bit more space is that we could actually utilize it for more images or larger images. And these images could also have quotes under them or like excerpts from the article, just like you would have in magazines, uh, just to spark more enthusiasm and spark more uh, engagement with the reader. If we have a larger image like this and uh, a caption below that is intriguing, this might encourage the reader to learn a bit more. And if Wikipedia is all about learning, then you get my point. Anyway, I'm drifting. What I'm trying to say is that playing around with this layout and having more space because we narrow down the block of text allows us to create a better learning experience, a better user experience for a reader. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this was useful. I had a lot of fun making it. I'm going to make another one next week. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. If you are a typographer and you have any like critical comments about this, I would love to hear them. Um, and if you just like it, just drop me a line. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.